Hello and welcome to the big picture. Problems related to the transfers and postings of the bureaucrats has been a long-standing one with frequent complaints about these acquiring arbitrary in nature more often than not. Now the Supreme Court has come out with a very significant judgment aimed at major reforms of the system. The order which directs the center as well as states to set up civil services boards to regulate postings, transfers and disciplinary action also directs that bureaucrats should have a fixed tenure. It also directs the bureaucrats not to act on oral orders of the political executive, among other things. This order passed on a public interest writ petition filed by 83 ex-bureaucrats is already being criticized as another instance of judicial overreach while some others feel that it is not practical. We will discuss the pros and cons of this order and how necessary it is and whether it impinges on the political executive's jurisdiction. To discuss this, I have with me one of the main petitioners, TSR Subramanian, former cabinet secretary, A.N. Tiwari, former secretary, department of personnel and training, Menika Guruswamy, one of the advocates who argued on this case on behalf of the petitioners, and Vinod Sharma, political editor, Hindustan Times. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Mr. Subramanian, I, I would like to come to you first. What prompted you people to go into the, to go to the Supreme Court and file this petition? Uh, Girish, uh, before I, the, the one quick word that I'm delighted that Menaka is there. She is not one of the, she is the advocate on record. She did a magnificent job as did uh, K.K. Venugopal, who was a senior advocate. Both of them worked pro bono and spent long hours and much of the time and energy. Uh, all of us, the whole country, not bureaucracy, the people of the country have no end of thanks for their efforts. You ask me why we did that. We have seen the continuous decline in administration. We had seen two major reports in the last decade. The Hota Commission report, second administrative commission report of uh, Moili. Basically, there have been 300 commission reports commissioned by the government in the last 30 years, starting from Santanam Commission report. Government had not implemented any major reforms on the fundamental issues of postings, transfers, uh, basically management of the services in a scientific manner without detracting from the political authorities ability to decide they're recommending the, the, it should be, at least should be fair and clean so we thought we got together we will advise and see you said that the criticism that judicial overreach yes don't forget the Supreme Court has not come here to help the bureaucrats Supreme Court has, help, has come here to help the people of India because there is a vacuum that the government did not do it in the interest of the people, the court had to step in. But uh, Mr. Subramaniam, don't you think that the, you know it impinges on the political executive's uh, authority? The entry point of the Supreme Court is Article 32. There is now a huge body of case law over the last 20 years. Menaka would be a better expert to talk about it. That the Three pillars are important, but the Constitution is the most important document. When the rights of the citizen through malgovernance is involved, the Supreme Court, as the interpreter of the Constitution, has not only the right, but the duty to step in to correct the wrong. This malgovernance by poor bureaucracy, primarily the subject of the executive, but the executive has failed to, do, to run it properly, and the public interest has suffered, and therefore the Supreme Court has every right to come in, and duty to come in, they would have failed in the duty if they didn't. Vinod Sharma, I would like to come to you now. You, you think that this order was, was, has been waiting for a long time. You, you agree, do you agree with Mr. Subramaniam that you know, the public interest had been, has been suffering because, because of the way the political executive has been behaving in this country, the arbitrariness in transfers, postings and all this? Well, um, Girish, I would like to make my point without agreeing or disagreeing with anyone. First of all, I must say that indeed there is uh, a need for reforms, uh, that we need to have a bureaucracy that is efficient and that is relatively independent. And under I underscore the word relatively independent. Uh, but I think that this judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court, and I just uh, am on the implications of judgment, this judgment uh, turns on, on, its, on the head uh, the the powers of the political executive which we elect after every five years. Now, the bureaucracy doesn't come to me after five years for me to reject 
और एक्सेप्ट द कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी और होम सेक्रेटरी और सेक्रेटरी डी ओ पी टी और सेक्रेटरी सिविल सप्लाईज दैट अकाउंटेबिलिटी इज देयर इन द सिस्टम एंड दैट अकाउंटेबिलिटी इज ऑन द पोलिटिकल एग्जीक्यूटिव नाउ यू नो आई हैव लॉट्स ऑफ रिस्पेक्ट एंड रिगार्ड फॉर द पिटिशनर सम ऑफ होम आई हैव नोन पर्सनली इंक्लूडिंग मिस्टर सुब्रमण्यम मिस्टर कार्तिक एन मिस्टर वेद मारवा एंड ऑल्सो द फॉर्मर चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर बट यू नो आई जस्ट वंडर समटाइम्स गिरीश एंड इट्स नॉट अ पर्सनल रिमार्क अगेंस्ट एनी वन दैट दिस एक्टिविज्म कम्स ओनली आफ्टर पोस्ट सुपर एन्यूएशन आई मीन आई रिमेंबर द कार्तिक एन पेपर्स रिलेटिंग टू कर्नाटक वेयर द पुलिस फोर्सेज व used to select candidates uh, perhaps during gundur rao's time you know i do not know the how some of these uh, you know uh, these activists you know this uh, bureaucrat student activists explain this position and i don't think that this order of the supreme court will get any more uh, uh, if i may use the word uh, respect by the state governments as this orders earlier on mr prakash singh petition right okay Mr. Tiwari, Mr. Tiwari, these are the kind of what Vinod said about you know, these are things which will have to be these questions will have to be answered. But the, but the larger issue, you think that the this kind this this judgment of the Supreme Court will bring about any uh, reforms in the in, in the system? I I would like to make a few observations before answering this question. First Please. is that it is a telling commentary right. on our times right. that something which is so essentially executive function. now is been activated by supreme court order absolutely now but that is the pattern which is emerging these days because the executive is not any more in a position to take the decisions is want to take but the other point is that over the years it has been found that executive the political executive is absolutely disinclined to take decisions which may somehow constrain its own powers one of them is this to give fixed tenure to civil servants to make file lotings compulsory not give oral orders and a host of other things so the 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 problem is with the political executive now civil servant can go only this far and no farther that answers mr sharma's question as to why the civil servants when they were incumbent officers did not really come out and do the same or seeking things they are now wanting the supreme court to do it is because the power of the political executive to say no is phenomenal and civil servants can go only this far there are several good proposals languishing on the files because and they did never come out into the open just because the political executive said no now <clears throat> when political executive becomes so moribund so utterly in unresponsive it becomes almost inevitable that somebody steps into the shoes somebody wrote a book called the rise of the unelected supreme court is an unelected body but right. it is trying to do things which the elected body is supposed to do it, right. now if you don't occupy this space and activate the space which is given to you others will step in and that is the arrangement in the constitution but i would also like to say having said this that this is a bandage for a deep and festering wound in the civil service right to say that only by giving this tenure you will you will create Fixed that accountability will, syndrome and things like this. Exactly. They're expecting too much. Exactly. But because nothing was happening, any something which happens looks like a big thing. Looks It, like a major reform. Precisely. That is precisely what is happening. And I blame this again on the political executive. Now, please see two or three things. When Attlee succeeded Churchill as Prime Minister of England, Yalta Conference was on, and Attlee completely surprised Roosevelt and Stalin. by taking with him exactly the same staff which was assisting yeah. churchill including his principal private secretary that is what permanent civil service is all about in a best minister mr. form of government no, no, mr mr tiwari i would like to i would like to come in here i mean it's fine but do we have the same kind the same standards of civil servants in this country at this point of time or in the last 15 20 years that you you can have this kind don't you don't you think that to a great extent or to at least some extent the bureaucracy as the bureaucrats have been responsible for this kind of arbitrariness unacceptable i agree with you but the point simply is this when i joined service in the 70s in the 60s and 70s uttar pradesh and bihar 
were cited as examples of some of the best cadres in the country. Absolutely. Now, what happened immediately after the 1980s that everything went down downhill? Why is it? So again, you blame the uh, the. I am the, I am putting the blame squarely on the, the, on the, po the, po on the political, political executive. On the political executive. Okay, we'll we'll come back to uh, to you. Uh, before that, let me go to Menka. Menka. You know, one of the things which is being said, you know, you have fought here, Mr. Subramaniam has, has been kind enough to give you the uh, compliments which you deserve. But the thing is, when, when this case, the, isn't there a presumption when, you, when this case was filed or, you know, it was fought, that the presumption is that all political executives are venal, are dishonest, and all uh, bureaucracies, bureaucrats are honest and sincere. Isn't that the basis? Isn't that the presumption on which this judgment was, this, or this petition was filed? Not at all. I mean, I think uh, the presumption uh, of the petition is very simple. Uh, the presumption of the petition is that we want uh, governance in this country um, that is accountable uh, and that is regulated um, and that, that really ensures that you will have officers of integrity, right? That is the presumption. The presumption behind this petition is a very simple one, that we believe in separation of powers, we believe in decent governance, and we would like to come to court to, you know, I, I've been following this conversation, and I've been following the conversation, you know, bits of it that I caught on TV yesterday, and I'm actually quite surprised, because I'm not sure how many people have actually read the judgment. It's a very streamlined, 40-odd page judgment. What does the court do? For a change, the judgment is not bulky. You know, I'm, I'm not <coughs> cynical about the Supreme Court, right? I'm not saying it's a perfect court. But what has the Supreme Court done here? What has Justice Radhakrishnan done here? He has not created some labyrinth or he no. has not created a matrix. In fact, he, in fact, he has reiterated the Prakash Singh yes, case. Yes, no, and... he's, he's actually done something else, right? He has taken what committee after committee that has been created, constituted, and paid for by the state, by your tax money and my tax money, what they have consistently said. Justice Radhakrishnan has not created anything. He has only asked that we look at the Huta Committee, we look at the second ARC, the Administrative Reforms Committee, we look at the Santanam Committee, and we look at what committee after committee has recommended in the context of administrative reform. He has taken three very simple things. And these are the three simple things that we asked for. This was not, we did not create a narrative of corruption and darkness. We said there are issues within the bureaucracy in terms of how often, not always, often, how there is interaction between the political executive and the bureaucracy. And sometimes, in some occasions, there is scope for abuse. What are the three simple reliefs? Tenure, written instructions, and a board. Yes. Now, this is something that every committee, and over the last 60 years, shortly post-independence, these committees started getting created and appointed by the government of India. And, and, and didn't perform, and didn't, or didn't function. No, the committees actually did. They performed very well. They had elaborate reports. They had well the, thought out you're talking recommendations. Of the ERC and Huta committee yes, and all that. and the state did not do anything. Okay, let me get uh, Mr. Subramanian. Mr. Subramanian, you know that now these, these two or three very significant uh, points in this judgment, fixed tenure, as Mr. Uh, Tiwari says fixed tenure is not going to solve all the problem. Uh, civil services boards, you know, you know, ultimately all these things will depend on the people who, who are going to occupy the positions in all these things. Um, Girish, yes, in the last point everywhere is quality of the people counts. Right. We are assuming neutrality here. Yes. I think three points, the two points, three points I wish to make rapidly. One is, Menaka had pointed out there are three basic uh, demands or players, as Tiwari also said, tenure, committee, and recording of instructions. Forget politics, forget bureaucracy. Are they not reasonable ones? In any sensible, properly functioning democracy, don't talk of venality, don't talk of who is corrupt, who is not corrupt. To have all public instructions recorded, is it wrong or right? To say minimum chance should be given two to three years for a person to perform, except the exception is not correct. Have a basis, a system for, why is, why are these things being treated as 
anti-people or anti-politics, etc., etc., number one. Number two, in a, in a vacuum, as Mr. Tiwari said, where we have not had a serious <coughs> reform, nobody is treating this judgment as a silver bullet, which will completely transform our bureaucracy, our polity, and our governance. But this is an important starting point so that many things can be done. We have gone downhill continuously for the last few years. This is the first important reversal. So its importance is not on the three specific remedies, important as they are. The real importance is in the nature of the reversal of the trend and to start reforms. Reversal of the trend you're talking about. <coughs> but I, I, would I would like to ask the same question which I asked Mr. Tiwari. How much would you attribute these failures, this collapse of, uh, of the system to, to, the, to the bureaucrats themselves. We have seen you know, all kinds of bureaucrats in this country, people who have, you know, <coughs> all of us know the, the kind of bureaucrat we have in this country also who have been to a great extent responsible for giving the political executive these kind of ideas also. Gilly, that is true. That is true, but don't confuse cause and effect. 20, 30 years back, the Indian bureaucracy was considered the best in the world. I can testify to that. I can testify, I don't want to go into details. Today, we are considered the worst in the world. Don't confuse. Now, who is, if the bureaucracy here is bad, if a company is doing badly, do you blame the lower level manager or the clerk? Do you blame the board or the managing director? Here, the country is firmly in the grip of the political class, which has no checks and balances, whatever. And this bureaucracy is totally under their thumb. And then you say bureaucracy is bad. And Actually, the bad elements in the bureaucracy have been lured, ha have been suborned to join the game and become uh, and, and become partners in crime. And hence the so don't confuse cause and effect. Unfortunately, we don't have a politician on this panel today to say. But so I will have to play the devil's advocate here. <laughs> Vinod Sharma, the entire blame is on the political executive. They are the ones who have spoiled the system. What was once a great bureaucracy, one of the best in the world, has has been turned into this because of the pol the venal political uh, class. Yeah, well, Girish. Again, this is my own personal view. I am not contradicting anyone. I am also not exceedingly cynical about the court's judgment, but I am a bit circumspect. Uh, I think that it takes two to tango, and there have been a number of instances of bureaucrats who understand the system much better than politicians who are temporary and tend to ride roughshod rather than circumvent it or skirt it or find loopholes, exploit loopholes. You see, n number of times we have seen that the legislation which is drafted, it is drafted by the bureaucrats, you know. It is vetted by the law ministry, passed by parliament. And n number of times there are strong laws, allegedly strong laws, with clear lacunae to, to be exploited. Now, where does this, uh, this ingenuity come from? It comes entirely from the bureaucracy. But I also, think, uh, uh, Vinod, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. One sec, one no, sec, Vinod, one sec. One, one, just one interjection. But, but, ultimate, but, but the ultimate accountability, accountability lies on the political no, executive no, no, that's what I'm coming to ensure to. that any such laws which are drafted no, are boss, corrected. That's what I'm coming to. I'm saying that there is a problem with the human resource in politics. <laughs> but this is not to suggest that there is no problem with the human resource in bureaucracy. There is a problem. And if there have to be genuine reforms, I don't think any court can address this. This problem of human resource, this problem of dipping morality, this problem of, uh, uh, you know, competitive riches. I mean, I think that we have had, we have seen Neela Yadav. Now, assuming we have seen D.G. Vanzara, Assuming that these people were appointed in key slots and with, with, the, with, with the mandate that you, you can't remove them for three, three years. Of course, uh, you know, the court provides for uh, removal uh, with an explanation. Who, who I think a better... I, 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 no, no, please, sir. I am saying... You finish it, you know, I'll I'm come to you, Mr. Subramaniam. A chief minister, Mr. Subramaniam, or a prime minister, Mr. Subramaniam, is not a prime minister if he cannot appoint his own cabinet secretary and surely you were appointed by a prime minister. Similarly, a chief minister has to have the instrumentalities through which he pursues his policies or wields power, sometimes coercive, sometimes honest, sometimes dishonest. Now, I think that in a, in a, in a, in a, in a environment 
when when fake encounters are being justified in this country we are talking about these kind of peripheral reforms i mean there is there is a need okay. for a change of mindset okay yes yes mr yes mr subramanian Well, I, I, I wouldn't like to argue on, on this particular point, but um, but the fact is that uh, uh, today, uh, if the law is good, the party has done a very good job. If the RTI is good, party has done a very good job. I I brought this law. I brought this legislation. If the law is bad, it is poor drafting. I think you have make up your mind. Take all the credit and all the discredit. No, I, no. I don't think this kind of dishing out. Number one. I number said two, it takes two to tango. Number two, given here, the the the, the 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 top posts are appointed by the government. They have to accept that. And if the officer is bad, the person who appoints has poor judgment. Okay, Mr. Tiwari. You now some of the points which we know Sharma makes. You know, taking into consideration what Mr. Subramanian, you know, is 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 justifiable, but. The fact of the matter is that that some leeway needs to be given to the political leaders. Do you agree with that or not? Let me uh, really put it in proper context. When Mr. Jyoti Basu was the Chief Minister of West Bengal, the average tenure of a collector was five years. The secretaries stayed on for as long as seven years. The government uh, stayed on for a long time. Long time. <laughs> so it 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 depends a lot on what the chief executive. political chief executive of the state is willing to do andhra pradesh was a laggard among the southern states in terms of all human uh, index parameters yes a chief minister came and rapidly he changed everything it was the, it it happened almost overnight the same bureaucracy which was a hide bound uh, process oriented bureaucracy suddenly became a delivering bureaucracy that is the importance of the political executive if the now to come to the point of tenure again because that is was the starting point <clears throat> there is no correlation between long tenure and good governance had Absolutely. that had that been be so west bengal would have been the best governed state Absolutely. in the country but there is a correlation between short tenures and poor governance mm. this is historically validated right. and bihar and uttar pradesh are its classic examples right. good states suddenly going down the hill in with a, 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 a with a speed which is unthinkable now who is responsible for all this it is exactly the same bureaucracy the same civil service the same is officers from uttar pradesh and bihar and other and rajasthan and 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 uh, haryana when they come to the center go to world bodies they they perform sterling uh, uh, functions what happens that they fail in the states because the the culture which is built around them and the culture is extremely driven by the political class they fail to 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 deliver or function so the bureaucrat's first instinct is to adjust he he doesn't want to fight he doesn't want to fight and they, why they're, should he they're not there are not too many kemkars around who, will, who who are who are willing to get transferred and who and are willing to and what does kemkar at the end achieve does he change the system he doesn't he doesn't he gets two minutes of fame on the television but at the end of the day the system really steam rolls in used to so menka I, i want to you know he was talking of states different he was giving examples of states during the arguments i'm sure the st the state government also must have responded to sure. this kind of things and the even sure. the central government sure how many state governments would agree with this with this order or you know how many state governments came forward and said yes we, we you know there should be a civil service board the, the, this kind of thing should happen and that's how the bureaucracy can be reformed mm. you know in fact what is interesting is you know this debate has characterized this as a very pointed pitched battle between bureaucrats and the executive yes you know firstly unfortunately that is that is the that is the turn it is taken yes but and it's also taken the turn of judiciary was the political yes executive. but and, and but you know fortunately that is in fact not the case right so there are and that is why it is important to read the judgment there are two important things to note here not all the states have consistently disagreed with many of these reforms for instance 13 states actually have some form of a board yes the union government in fact does have some of these measures in place some of the states don't so there is in fact some consistency and inconsistency right but what is true in the context of a debate on administrative reform is one a lack of thoughtfulness and two to characterize the debate as one of pitched battle between partisan interests and 
All I'd like to say is that the purpose of this judgment, if anything, you know, if you see the sober, muted nature of the judgment, if you see the judge locating this in committee reports, in all India service rules, which are only applicable at the federal level, is exactly this, is to show that some of this has already been debated and implemented, some of it remains to be so at the states, and all of this is being done within the constitutional framework. Because remember... So, a bit, you know, my question, my, my initial question, how yes. many states were, were keen to, when they, when, they, when they came on this, during their... Look, argument? about 20 states filed counter affidavits. Yes. And I, my office has got this lovely table of what each one has said. In fact, one... How many of them were willing to Well, you this? know, s certain states have some sort of a board in place. Okay. So they actually said that we have this board. The judgment doesn't go that far. The judgment is saying you must have boards of serving officers who have expertise in various areas and reasons must be provided to okay, them. Okay. We, uh, we, uh, Mr. Subramaniam, uh, you, you think that now, the, now that this judgment has come about, do you expect the state governments and the center to respond, to set up? They, they have been given three months time. This was, this was also, I think, done during the, in the Prakash Singh's judgment. Do you see this happening any time soon? Um, we are now six years after the Prakash Singh judgment. And the times, the atmosphere is different. The ethos is different now. Now, this is uh, what has been said, as Menka said by the court, is something which has been established, the common denominator. In fact, uh, the recommendation, the decisions of the court are much less than what Moili, the current cabinet minister of government of India has, has recommended. So I would expect logic to prevail. I would expect at least most states to fall in line. In any case, it will be a bad portend if the orders, well considered orders of the Supreme Court issued in public interest are not followed. That is not a healthy sign for the democracy. I hope that situation will not arise. Okay, I think on that note we need to end. The fact is, the fact of the matter is, this is something, bureaucracy, bureaucratic reforms is something which we have been talking about for years. But whether this will trigger off those reforms, we'll have to wait and watch because there is a lot of resistance as we have seen from the political executive and the political class. How this will be implemented, it will be worth waiting and watching. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. T.S.R. Subramaniam, Ian Tiwari, Menka Guruswami and Vinod Sharma. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time on Monday. Meanwhile, have a great weekend and a great Diwali.